you have a list of different buckets with tasks in them. Now, if you're familiar with Trello, then this might be something, a layout that you've seen before. But what's really cool is you can change the way you group it. So I can say I want to see it by progress. Not started, in progress, completed. I can see it instead by assigned to, which of the people in my team each task is assigned to. Now I can, with any bucket, I can very easily just move things. So I can just assign these things to these people like that. And I can then just go here and change the bucket. And again, I can choose to put the custom buckets however I want to arrange them. So the use case for this was that I was deciding what to teach, which Microsoft Office applications to teach at a training course I was running. And so I wanted to have which tasks, which exercises should I include under which section. So app mentions, that's important for the team section meeting things, files and collaboration. Most of these are to do with Microsoft Teams, but I have here, for example, PowerPoint and Word, etc. These things, if you're not familiar with them, then I have loads of videos that discuss them that I'll link to as well in the description below. Stream as well, a really, really cool one. So there you have different ways that you can group it. You can also look at it by due date, what's next week, what's in the future. Most of my things have no date, which I think is akin to most of the ways that I do projects. I don't have that many due dates. And something called labels. So here you can custom make labels, and I'll show you how to do that in a sec. But the default is with buckets. Now, if you want to add a new task, you can just sort of say what the task name. So demo outlook meeting color coding automated that will just add it there press enter to lock it in but you can do all these other things within it so you can assign it to someone in your team you can even assign it to multiple people you can choose the progress value the priority uh, start end date any notes a checklist of items so i could say this is about Conditional formatting. This is a real thing, by the way. I have a video that I've got on how to do this. It's such a useful feature. And then it's useful for things like deadline equals red and call equals blue. These are automated color codes that I use in my Outlook. I'll link to another video on these as well, how to make that. <laughs> but for here, I'm going to put those under here. And I can choose show on card. We'll see what that does. It's pretty obvious. You can add an attachment, upload a file or a link. I'll show you what that looks like as well. Over here, you can custom make these own categories. So I've just made their task, as in the class does it, mine, as in I do it, a guest, meaning that a training assistant guest is helping it or other things that I choose. I can overwrite this, so the default will just give you the colors, but I can write over it and say this is, as well as an exercise, this is maybe a theory part. And the difference between these tags and the buckets is that you can apply it to many. So I can say this is both theirs and it's a theory part. And I can just tick both of those. Click out when you're done and it locks in. And as you can see, because I ticked the button that says show on card, it shows me there on the card. If I untick it and just click out, it just removes it from that part of it. So there's a lot of things that you can do to manage it here. You can also see it in multiple views. So charts can show you how much you've done versus how much is left, the number of tasks in each bucket, priority. I don't find this particularly useful. Uh, you can also schedule and see for the ones with deadlines, how they are showing on the calendar. Let's go back to board and I'll show you how that would look. So let's say that I start this tomorrow and end it next week. And let's give it a couple of tags and assign it to myself. Click out, that's the easiest way to lock it in. Go to schedule, and now you can see it's there starting and ending where it goes. 
You can, if you even want to, export this to Outlook and then it adds all of these as tasks in your Outlook calendar by going here and choose Add Plan to Outlook Calendar. These three dots, you can have a conversation about it through Outlook or probably more interesting is through Teams. I'll show you that in a second. You can manage the members that are associated with it, any files in this team. This is behind the surface storing things in an Office 365 group. Uh, there's a notebook, which is OneNote, um, Sites, which is SharePoint. Uh, you have favorites, so you can click here to add them to your favorite, and then it just pops up to this favorites bucket down here. You can export to Excel. And this is quite nice if you just want to see a completely different view and edit the settings there as well, as well as copying links. So let's see what the Excel one looks like. It's just this one, a task ID, task name. It's not very pretty, but it's quite good for analysis for people that like to see things in a spreadsheet like myself and then create pivot tables to just summarize things. The thing about Planner is that there's really just not that much to it. There aren't that many things that you can do. So over here in boards, this is pretty much what it can do. You can filter things. So this is quite nice if you only want to filter the tasks due next week, for example, or you can filter them based on other things as well, priorities, and add just the filters that can get to all that criteria there. You can copy it using these three dots and now Planner Hub just shows you for your favorite plans, how this is viewed. So what started versus in progress and complete. Latest calculated automatically based on due dates. And you can add anyone to a favorite by just starring it over there and seeing how it's working. My tasks will show you all of your tasks across all of your plans regardless of which plan these are coming from. If you want to create a new plan, you just come here and just give it there. You can either add it to an existing Office 365 group, probably what I would recommend. Add to existing Office 365 group. And I'm going to go to the features test group, give it a name. So this is just a demo on video. And then create plan. Just a blank plan. You should probably start by grouping by bucket and then just create your buckets by double clicking there and say this is demos, this could be exercises, this could be videos, etc. Just move these along like that and just add tasks as you go along. The last thing I want to show you is the interaction with Teams. So here I am in Teams and then just press this button and I'll make a new tab for it. So I'm going to search for planner. I'm going to use an existing plan. And this one that I just created, demo on video. So press save. Note that you can only add plans that are in this team, in this group. And now it's synced. So here if I add something new, so this could be a test on teams, add task, go back here, I refresh. I can see that this is now showing me up there as well. I actually really like dealing with it through Microsoft Teams. You can have this conversation about it like you can with everything Teams related. It's much better for adding files than doing it on the web. And plus, Teams is just a really good way to interact with and deal with all of the Microsoft Office 365 apps, I think. I just love the more feature in PowerPoint. <laughs> so some use cases for Planner. Project management tool is the most classic one where you can allocate different projects in different buckets and categories to different people and see that in either boards or task lists, etc. But I've used it in a bunch of other different innovative ways. For example, recruitment pipeline. So I had one bucket be for people who have applied, another one being for rejected, another bucket being for people who are progressing to an interview, etc. Sales pipeline, so are they a lead, are they a prospect, are they a full client, etc., etc. Kind of low-grade CRM. It works really, really well in these use cases. By the way, PowerPoint with the new Office 365 is amazing. I didn't even have to 
manually make these icons in this slide. Let me just show you very quickly. So over here, you can just type out your slide, but then you can go to design ideas and it actually uses artificial intelligence to figure out which icon is associated with which thing. You can even change the icon there if you want a slightly different one by going there. And I have a full video where I go a lot more into this that I'm gonna link in the description below and over here. Cool, so if you like this video, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel where I have loads of videos about Excel, PowerPoint, Power BI, and Microsoft Office 365 features focusing on productivity. Thanks for watching.